Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Natalie Ann Holloway? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of this case, I'll move to the timeline of the disappearance, then offer my analysis. Natalie Ann Holloway was born in Clinton, Mississippi on October 1, 1986. Her parents are Dave and Beth Holloway. They would divorce in 1993. Beth married an Alabama businessman named George Twitty, and the family moved to Mountain Brook, Alabama. Holloway graduated from Mountain Brook High School in 2005 and was planning on attending the University of Alabama, where she had a full scholarship. Now moving to the timeline of the disappearance. To celebrate graduation, a group of 124 Mountain Brook High School students planned a trip to Aruba. Seven chaperones would go with them. Holloway was one of the students going on that trip. The group would arrive in Aruba on May 26, 2005. According to the police, the students from Mountain Brook High School were unruly. They were enjoying their newfound freedom in that environment. There was a lot of wild partying, consumption of alcohol, and they would frequently switch rooms at night. The staff at the Holiday Inn, where they were staying, told them they were not welcome to come back next year. Holloway was no exception in terms of her behavior. Apparently, she drank all day, every day. She started every morning with cocktails. She drank so much that she missed breakfast on two occasions. Even her classmates thought her drinking was out of control. On May 30, at 1.30 a.m., Holloway was seen leaving a nightclub called Carlos and Charlie's with three individuals. 17-year-old Geran Vandersloot, he was a Dutch honor student, 21-year-old Deepak Kalpo, and his 18-year-old brother, Satish Kalpo. May 30 was the day of Holloway's return flight, but her friends were unable to locate her. In her room at the Holiday Inn, her passport and luggage were found. Law enforcement searched the area, but there was no sign of Natalie Holloway. The police discovered that Holloway had left the nightclub with Duran Vandersloot. They stopped by his residence. He initially denied knowing anything about Holloway, but then he offered a different story. He said that he and Deepak Kalpo had driven Natalie to the beach because she wanted to see sharks. When they were finished, they dropped her off at her hotel at about 2 a.m., Vandersloot said that Holloway was trying to get out of the vehicle, and she fell. He offered to help her, but she refused. As he and Kalpo were driving away, they noticed that Holloway was approached by a dark man wearing a black shirt. They believed the shirt was similar to what security guards would wear. After a massive search effort, there was still no sign of Natalie Holloway. On June 5, 2005, the police in Aruba detained two former security guards from a hotel that was near the Holiday Inn. They thought that maybe they had something to do with Holloway's disappearance because they were known for cruising hotels and picking up women. One of them had a prior run-in with the law. They were released without being charged. On June 9, 2005, Vandersloot and the Kalpo brothers were arrested on suspicion of homicide and kidnapping. Eight days later, a disc jockey was also arrested. Five days after this, on June 22, Vandersloot's father, Paulus Vandersloot, was arrested. On June 26, both the disc jockey and Vandersloot's father were released. Here's the story that the three suspects in custody relayed to the police. They said that Vandersloot and Natalie Holloway were dropped off at a beach near the Marriott Hotel. Vandersloot claimed that he left her there unharmed. Vandersloot changed his story after this, saying that he was dropped off at home and Holloway stayed in the vehicle with the brothers as they drove off. Not long after this, a gardener claimed to have seen Vandersloot and the brothers on May 30, between 2.30 a.m. and 3 a.m., near the Marriott Hotel Beach. A person who was jogging claimed to have seen the men burying a woman with blonde hair at a landfill in the afternoon on May 30. The statements from both of these witnesses caused a massive search, but the police didn't find anything. The Calpo brothers were placed under arrest again. On August 26, the police also arrested a new suspect, 
a 21-year-old. On September 3, all four of the suspects were released, with some restrictions. Eleven days later, the restrictions were removed. After his release, Vandersloot returned to the story that he left Holloway alone on the beach. He claimed that Holloway wanted to have sex with him, but he refused because he did not have a condom. Holloway wanted him to stay there on the beach, but he had to go to school the next morning, so he left. Vandersloot told the police he was ashamed for leaving Holloway alone on the beach, and this is why he was deceptive. During an interview, a deputy chief involved in the investigation said that Holloway probably died from alcohol or drug poisoning, and her body was never found because someone hid it. He also said that Natalie Holloway had possessed illegal substances, a claim that her parents deny. In 2006, several new suspects were arrested. Nothing ever came of it. They were all released. In 2007, Vandersloot and the Calpo brothers were once again detained. They were released shortly afterward. On December 18, 2007, the case was officially declared closed, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. In January of 2008, it was reopened after Vandersloot was captured on hidden camera describing Holloway's death. He said that she started shaking and became unresponsive. He then disposed of her body. Vandersloot told the police that what he said on the recording was false. He only said it because he was using marijuana. Vandersloot gave another interview saying that he sold Natalie into sexual slavery and his father paid off the police. He later retracted those statements. In 2010, Vandersloot attempted to extort Natalie Holloway's mother, Beth. Through Beth's representative, Vandersloot offered to reveal information about Natalie's death in exchange for $250,000. The representative contacted the FBI, who arranged to transfer money to Vandersloot. After receiving the money, Vandersloot provided false information about the location of Holloway's body. He referenced a house that was not constructed at the time of her disappearance. Vandersloot was indicted for extortion and wire fraud. On May 30, 2010, a 21-year-old business student named Stephanie Flores Ramirez was reported missing in Lima, Peru. Her body was found three days later in a hotel room rented by Vandersloot. When he was questioned, Vandersloot confessed to killing her because she accessed his laptop without permission and found files that connected him to Natalie Holloway. The police believe that Vandersloot killed her to take money that she had won from a casino. He was charged with first-degree murder and robbery. In 2012, he pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to 28 years in prison. Now moving to my analysis. This case has led to a lot of controversy. We see that Holloway's family has been critical of the authorities in Aruba. Investigators and others in Aruba have their own negative comments for the Holloway family. Members of the public have been critical of both groups. There were various lawsuits that were filed against suspects and by suspects. As far as I know, all the lawsuits were either dismissed or had a negligible impact. I think much of the criticism has to do with the perception that Holloway's family pressured the Aruban authorities into detaining suspects prematurely and into detaining the wrong suspects. Here are my thoughts on this part. The Aruban authorities needed to follow the law. If they were being pressured by the family, then okay, they still need to do their job. It doesn't change anything from the police point of view. The family can't be blamed for being upset that their daughter was missing. They can't be blamed for wanting people to be held accountable. The authorities in Aruba need to own their behavior, to only arrest people in accordance with the law. The strategy for their investigation was essentially hey, let's try detaining this guy. They weren't arresting people at random, but it wasn't much better than that. It was like their plan was to just keep arresting people until one of them told them something useful about the case they were working on. If you stay at it long enough, eventually you can arrest everybody in Aruba. It seemed as though they believed that interviewing suspects was the only way of gathering evidence. Now moving to Joran Vandersloot. Many people, of course, believe that Vandersloot was responsible for Holloway's disappearance. What are my thoughts on his potential guilt or innocence? Vandersloot told the police three different stories. The one the police believe is the version where he left Natalie Holloway on the Marriott Hotel beach. Apparently, she was very intoxicated at this time, so her ability to defend herself was reduced. At this point, we don't know what happened. 
Did Vandersloot really just walk away, as he claimed in his story, in at least one of the stories? No witnesses can verify his whereabouts that morning. In addition, there are two other items that look suspicious. Vandersloot's sneakers, the ones he was wearing that morning, have never been found. And there was a burglary of a fisherman's hut near the Marriott Hotel Beach, in which a machete and a lobster trap were stolen. As far as having the capability to commit murder, Vandersloot establishes this later on when he murdered the 21-year-old woman in Peru. Considering all the evidence, I think it's reasonable to believe that Vandersloot was involved in Holloway's disappearance. Perhaps Holloway refused a sexual advance made by Vandersloot, and in anger he killed her. He told the police that she wanted to have sex with him, and he refused her. Maybe this was his way of protecting his ego. He was trying to rewrite the story so that he was not rejected. Another theory would be that Holloway died from substance use and Vandersloot disposed of her body. Perhaps he took her body out past a reef that wasn't too far from the beach. Apparently, the currents there would have pulled her body out into the ocean. Holloway was drinking quite a bit, and alcohol use was evidently new to her. This may have been her first chance to be free and cut loose a bit. She was naive. She underestimated the dangers of substance use. She liked the way that alcohol made her feel, and she didn't know how to rein in her consumption, or she did not want to. It's not completely unreasonable to think that this could have led to her death. Alcohol poisoning was certainly a possibility. The problem with this theory, of course, is why didn't Vandersloot simply call for help? So he's with a woman who dies, and the first thing he thinks of is how to get rid of the body? It makes me wonder if perhaps he was committing another offense when she died, and that's why he was so eager to hide the evidence. One last theory would be that Vandersloot really did leave her alone, and someone else came along and killed her. This is exceedingly unlikely, but technically possible. Moving to my final thoughts, I think one theme in this case is how everyone had an agenda. The suspects didn't want their reputations to be harmed. The police wanted to operate without pressure from Holloway's family or the media. They wanted to arrest pretty much everybody they felt like. Holloway's family wanted people to be arrested right away. They wanted immediate justice. They believed they knew who was responsible for Holloway's disappearance. In the end, nobody was able to get what they wanted. Lost in the middle of all this controversy and media coverage was the fact that a young woman died for no reason. More so than anyone else, Natalie Holloway was the one who was cheated out of getting what she wanted. Those are my thoughts in the case of Natalie Holloway. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.